cars are all about compromise. Some are fast, some are attractive, some are practical, and some are fun. But very few combine all those things into one package. But we might just have found a car that finally gives us the perfect blend. This is the BMW M3 Touring. Big power, big practicality, and big fun. It's a recipe we've seen before in BMW's performance SUVs and saloons, though it's the first time we're seeing this combination in a 3 Series estate. And believe me, it's long overdue. It's an M3, and that means it's got M3 power. Under the bonnet is a 3-litre straight six, cranking out 510 horsepower, 650 newton meters of torque, going through an eight-speed gearbox to all four wheels for massive traction, if you want. Of course, if you don't want, it can do this. One minute, it's a calm, everyday family car. The next, it's a frothing lunatic. It's even got a drift analyzer. <laughs> it just eggs you on. Right, what's my score? Three stars. <laughs> okay, fun factor, check. So it puts a smile on your face, but then that's to be expected. It's an M3. For this to be truly perfect, it also needs to look the part. And hand on heart, it really does. And yes, that does include the front. I know, I know, it was a bit challenging at first. We all had a laugh, but BMW got it right. Because if you look at a normal 3 Series, it just looks boring. This thing, beaver teeth, bum face, whatever you want to call it, to me, it just looks epic. Don't at me. The details form a cohesive whole. I love the menacing headlights, the sharp lines on the front bumper, especially with the optional carbon and this sculpted bonnet. In profile, it has a terrific stance with 19-inch wheels at the front and 20-inch wheels tucked into rear bodywork that's been extended to accommodate wider M suspension. At the rear, there are similarities to the iconic Z3 M Coupe but with added brawn from the large diffuser and quad exhausts. It's a muscular beast of a car that's both subtle and aggressive in equal measure. But what about practicality? Well, I'm glad you asked. That's why I brought my trusty tumble dryer. Wife's gonna kill me. Here's the problem, you see. The saloon version of the M3 has 480 liters of storage in the boot, and this thing only has 500 liters. Worse than that, the X3M has 50 more litres of space. So on the surface, the M3 Touring actually isn't that practical. Or is it? Well, check this out, because it has one of the coolest features on any car. Look at that, the rear glass opens up, so you can load your shopping in there, no problem whatsoever, and listen to this sound. That's just lovely, isn't it? Plus, power tailgate opens nice and wide, which means you can load stuff in there much more easily than you can a saloon. You can drop the seats, just like that. It's got some underfloor storage. I've also got a towel. You might be wondering what this is for. Not only does it match my jumper, but it also protects the bodywork in case I want to load a large object like this. All right, bear with me. Yep, no problem whatsoever. I mean, look at that, it's even got a little cutout section perfectly built for tall obstacles like that. Yeah, practicality, check. Now, I know what you're thinking. He's got a tumble dryer in the back. He's a genius, but there's no three pin plug. How's he gonna use it? Well, there are four USB ports in this car, two up front, two in the rear. They're not gonna be much use to me, but the way this thing changes direction, I reckon my knickers could be dry within about three or four corners. And that gives me a little bit of an opportunity to talk about what it's like to live with the M3 Touring. 
And actually, it's not as good as you think. So the first thing you notice, and I will give it some credit, is that the suspension is actually pretty good. It's way better than the BMW X3 M, which feels like it's riding on a bag of spanners. This thing is kind of plush. I like it. It's also not the quietest car in the world, but I can live with that. The thing that gets on my nerves though, are these seats. The car's quite low, which means that when you get inside, you basically have to fall into the cabin. And then, I don't know if you've noticed on these particular M Sport seats, they have these handles that stick up, which means that you fall with your bum crack straddling these protrusions. And let me tell you, that is not the most pleasant sensation in the world. And then when you're in the car, you realize how little padding there is in the seats. It's so hard, you've got bits sticking into your flesh. And what is this thing? in between my legs. What is the point of that? And then there's the technology, which is flashy and fancy, but occasionally baffling to use. Everything is controlled by the big touchscreen, which isn't always as intuitive as it could be. You will need to read the manual. And don't get me started on the cost of owning this car. The starting price is a whopping £80,000, and if you drive it enthusiastically, you can expect pretty abysmal fuel economy. Around 25 miles per gallon if you take it easy, or single digits at worst. In an age where there's a cost of living crisis, this is not the ideal daily, but rather a car you might just consider parking up and walking away from. Luckily, there's one big reason you won't want to walk away from the M3 Touring, the performance. It's insane. Now, BMW say it'll do 0 to 62 in 3.6 seconds all day long. 12.9 seconds to the quarter mile and 174 miles an hour flat out. Right now, I'm doing 140 in sixth gear. 150. Oh, I'm getting scared now. 160. Okay, I'm back on the brakes. Yeah. <laughs> Running out of runway massively, but trust me, this is a quick car. Wow. Straight into a drift. Yeah, buddy. surface it really shouldn't handle quite as well as it does but it is absolutely brilliant to drive this thing it weighs 1865 kilograms which is about 160 kilos or two washer dryers heavier than the m3 saloon BMW have done all they can to manage the extra weight. They've retuned the shock absorbers, ABS and steering, and added additional bracing under the rear, the front, as well as bracing above the engine to improve chassis stiffness. For the most part, it feels very similar to the standard M3 saloon. It's actually got carbon ceramic brakes. But it doesn't stop quite as well as the lighter saloon version. However, the agility is to die for. There is a little bit of understeer as you approach the limits, but it's so easy just to balance the car on the throttle, bring the back end around and sort it all out. It's an absolute joy to drive this thing. There isn't a tremendous amount of feedback from the steering. It feels almost a little bit too light for my taste, but actually when you get the hang of it, It's no problem whatsoever. It's just hilarious fun. Probably the best thing about the car though is you can set it up exactly how you want it. So you've got two shortcut buttons, M1 and M2 on the steering wheel, and then you can choose your specific setup for each of those buttons. And then choose whether you want all wheel drive, all wheel drive sport, or rear wheel drive. I found myself spending quite a lot of time simply with rear wheel drive. I don't recommend it on the road, but out here on the track, what a joy. For those who like the idea of drifting but lack the confidence, there's also a variable traction control system that lets you choose how sideways you get in the bends. Select the highest level of traction and it will keep the rear end in check. Choose the lowest level and it won't. 
Keep it at a happy medium and it will act like an almost foolproof drift mode, letting you hang the back end out for as long as you dare. I love this car. It does so much so well. It's brilliant. It's such an antidote to the usual variety of performance SUVs on the market. Is it perfect? I mean, that's a tough question. Cars are all about compromise. Some are fast, some are attractive, some are usable, and some are fun. Historically, very few combine all those things. But as of today, we can add another contender, the BMW M3 Touring, to the list of cars that come closest to absolute perfection. Oh.